เลยอะ
How I'm... very convenient. You know, I've got uh... a nasty feeling he's not one of us. <laughs> Are we escaping British prisoners, hmm? When I tell the Gestapo what I have found, I will get a medal for this. <laughs> and what about the picture? I would say you stole it and concealed it. Ah, but, Colonel, the Gestapo will take the picture back to Berlin and then goes your pension. I think Rennie has a very good point there, Colonel. <laughs> Keep some fight. I will deal with the Gestapo. <laughs> Have you found the treasure? We have just searched the cellar. Not a smell of it. Continue to look. I shall not return to Berlin until the picture is found. Heil Hitler. Heil Hitler. Heil Hitler. Ah! Yeah. <laughs> Gilles, Pierre, Jacques, Emile, my old friends, come in. <laughs> sit down, sit down. Wine on the house for my old friends, Pierre, Emile, and Jacques, and Gilles. <laughs> Suddenly, in this town, many onion sellers. It is a festival, Herr Flick. <laughs> Every year, they gather in the town to examine each other's onions. <laughs> they do the dance of the onions. <laughs> and at midnight, they have the feast of the onions. <laughs> and they just eat and eat all the onions. <laughs> Sounds very strange to me. By three o'clock in the morning, it sounds unbelievable. Until <laughs> <laughs> tomorrow, Colonel. Al Hitler. Al Hitler. Al Hitler. Why not? <laughs> Monsieur René, I have just saved your life. I am eternally grateful, Colonel. And from now on, I give the orders, and you will listen to every word very carefully and obey every detail. Anything you say, Colonel. Yvette will be in room six in one hour with the vet, celery, and the flying helmet. <laughs> and the feather duster? Two. <laughs> what about the egg whisk? No egg whisk, Renee. The electric mixer with two screws. The colonel will see you now. <laughs> oh, Colonel, what an honor it is to be received in, in your wonderful commandeered office. <laughs> I have taken the liberty of bringing a few simple, worthless gifts for you. A bottle of Chateau Lafitte 37. <laughs> some rather good cigars, which I was keeping until after the war was over, but as you were doing so well, I thought you might as well have them now. <laughs> some cheese, a little cognac, uh, Napoleon, of course, and a small bottle of perfume for your assistant. Thank you very much, but I don't wear it. <laughs> Not you. This assistant, this beautiful young lady, this fine example of German womanhood. Oh, thank you. Now, what can I do for you, Colonel? We just want you to answer a few questions. Will there be anything else, Colonel? <clears throat> Will there be anything else, Hans? Uh, yes, Colonel. We shall require a pair of pliers and some rubber hose. Oh, no, not the pliers and the rubber hose. No, I will tell you everything I know. It is so we can get the gas poker working. <laughs> not the gas poker! <laughs> I will tell you everything I don't know. Sit down, down Rene. <laughs> we have a serious problem. Yes, well, I don't think it's as serious as my problem. <laughs> we know you have been hiding British airmen and helping them to escape. Well, I know you know that, Colonel, but may I remind you that on your behalf I am also hiding a valuable old painting which you hope to sell after the war. One or? <laughs> <laughs> Not to mention a priceless cuckoo clock. Two one? <laughs> <laughs> no, Hans, no score. Because we're going to hand that painting to the Gestapo. And then they will leave us in peace. Because we will hand you over as well. Oh, but, Colonel, that painting was to be your pension after the war. With it, you could have bought your own little Berthes garden in the mountains. <laughs> if you hand it over, you will have nothing. And if you hand me over, well, well the cafe will not be the same without jolly, jovial, generous Rene. <laughs> <laughs> the life and soul of any party. <laughs> It is very sad, René, but there is no other course open to us. 
But we've enjoyed your hospitality. Yes, I had noticed. <laughs> we've always regarded you as a friend. Well, I, I look upon you in the same way, Colonel, and the captain, and the young lady out there with the big... We all think of her as a friend. <laughs> <laughs> the last thing in the world we want is for you to suffer at the hands of the Gestapo. Well, you are most considerate, Colonel. So, I am going to give you this ring. Inside is a pill. Crush <laughs> it between your teeth. And in one and a half seconds, you shall be like a dead beetle. <laughs> I don't think I shall ever forget your kindness, Colonel. <laughs> Perhaps Rene would like to give his wife one. Even a Frenchman cannot think of that sort of thing at a time like this. <laughs> yes, <Yeah>, take it. <clears throat> Colonel, a, a little idea is running around in my brain. How would it be if we let the Gestapo find a copy of the painting? You have a copy of the painting? No, no, but perhaps one could be made by... Uh, well, let us say a forger. You know a forger? Well, in my business, you meet all sorts. Mind you, he would want pay. How much? Well, money means so very little in these hard times, but perhaps a bottle of Chateau Lafitte 37 and some cigars and a little cognac. What about the cheese? You may keep the cheese. <laughs> we could use it to stuff in our ears when his wife sings in the cafe. <laughs> Actually asking us to lend you our uniforms? Colonel, believe me, it is the only way to get the picture to England to have it copied. But, Colonel, if the Gestapo ever found out that we have been helping British Evan to escape, do you not think that they would be cross? <laughs> <laughs> if they find out about the stolen painting, they will be cross. Look! Look. You will be upstairs with the girls, and your uniforms will be quietly stolen. After a brief but very enjoyable interval, they will be returned to you. <laughs> now, what do you say, Colonel? Look, the girls are waiting. <laughs> will there be time for the flying helmet and the wet celery? <laughs> Just. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> what about you, Hans? Well, I, I am thinking about my little wife in Berlin. Uh, what about Maria and the egg whisk? <laughs> <laughs> I am the... Oh. I am the... <laughs> I'm thinking that Berlin is a very long way away. <laughs> my wife is about the same size as Maria, uh, height-wise. <laughs> it is all fixed, but don't forget the boots. I shall say to for boots. <laughs> Their boots. <laughs> Get out of your talks, chaps. Uniforms will be here any second. Hey, good show. What is happening? They are taking off their clothes ready for their disguise. They must not remove their trousers in front of my mother. <laughs> <laughs> It is war, I understand. <laughs> I say, look at the crumpets. <laughs> Get cracking, chaps. Do you think we've got time? <laughs> Not there. The clothes. <laughs> you French people, you have some... Very nice jewellery. Thank you. I have a trinket that is much admired. Really? <laughs> Can I show it to you? If you must, yes. Yeah. <laughs> ah, yes. It has a picture inside. Oh. Look. Ah, oh, yes, what, what lovely long blonde hair. Yes, isn't it? Unfortunately, he had to have it cut off when he joins the army. <laughs> are they ready? Well, they are dressed, but they're not very realistic. <sighs> God. And they've forgotten the painting. The what? The Pauline Madonna with the... 
big boobies. I say, chaps, you've forgotten the picture. No, we haven't. We took it out of the frame. Where is it now? <laughs> Try to look more German. Right here. <laughs> uh, uh, good night, gentlemen. Come again soon. Uh, give my love to the Führer. Heil Hitler. Heil Hitler. Heil Hitler. Heil Hitler. Heil Hitler. <laughs> Cheerio. Cheerio. <laughs> you see, I have to be nice to the Germans. They are my customers, they are winning the war, so if I am not nice to them, they will shoot me. I have to be nice to the resistance. I suppose they will shoot him for being nice to the Germans. <laughs> I have to be nice to my wife, because if she finds out I'm having an affair with Yvette, she will shoot me. <laughs> and if Yvette finds out I'm having an affair with Maria, well, she will shoot me. <laughs> now, Otto Flick, the Gestapo officer, is having dinner in the back room. Upstairs are two German officers in their underwear because I have borrowed their uniforms to help two British airmen to escape. The pianist over there is in fact a forger for the Marquis. And the German officer at that table fancies me. <laughs> and it is only Tuesday. Really? The Colonel is getting very impatient. You promised he would have his uniform back in 15 minutes. It is now 45. Take his mind off it. Keep him amused. How can I look at my salary? <laughs> but Maria, can't you entertain him? How can I? My salary isn't even good enough for soup. Really? <laughs> Flick of the Gestapo is paying his bill. Really? Flick says he's going to search the building. What? He will find a painting of the fallen Madonna by Van Klopp in the cellar. No, no, the painting has gone. But so too are the uniforms of the Colonel and your Captain. If they find the Colonel and the Captain in their underwear, this could make the Gestapo suspicious. <laughs> Helga, you must keep Erflick amused. Amusing the Gestapo is a very serious business. Well, surely you can think of something? I have it. Give me a large glass of your strongest brandy. Of course, at once. <laughs> you have ten minutes. <laughs> Make it five. We must find the German officers quickly. Get them to the room of my mother. Yeah, Maria, go and tell the officers. I will explain to the old girl. It is. Can nobody hear me? Shut up, you old bat. This place is, <laughs> is crawling with the Gestapo. I shall tell them nothing. Now, listen carefully to what I have to say. Two German officers are coming to your room. Pigs! <laughs> I will fight them to my dying breath. <laughs> They've taken off their uniforms. Have you no finesse? <laughs> they will not touch you, Mama. <laughs> That is what they said in 1917. <laughs> Get in the wardrobe. If I do not have my uniform in ten minutes, you will be shot. But, Colonel, your revolver is on the belt of the uniform, which is around the waist of the British Airman, who is not here. <laughs> Get in the wardrobe. <laughs> He is searching the restaurant and then he is on his way up here. Who is? Otto Flick of the Gestapo. Gestapo? <laughs> Not a word. The Gestapo are coming. If they find the Germans in the wardrobe, I could be shot. I shall not yield to the torture of the Gestapo. Long live France! Shut up! <laughs> Good evening. Good evening, Herr. I am sorry to put you to inconvenience, but there are certain things I need to know. There are two German officers in the boardroom as a radio is under my bed. You know, Colonel, it is quite pleasant to be a French uninsular. People smile at us. Mm. Especially that German officer over there. Right. Hello. <laughs> I prefer, I think I prefer being a peasant to being a German. You'll be a dead peasant. 
Herr Flick finds out we've been helping British airmen to escape. I have good news, Colonel. London is making your uniforms. They are working through the night and they will be dropped by parachute at dawn tomorrow. But how do we know they will fit? But they are being made by the very best Savile Row tailors, Solomon and Klein. <laughs> Jewish tailors? <laughs> are you mad? But they are the best, Herr Colonel. That's not the point, Hans. It's the principle of the thing. If I'd known they were employing Jewish tailors, things would have been different. We could have ordered some extra shirts. <laughs> The lunch will soon be ready. Ah, what is it? You filled the fish in bagels? <laughs> no, it is a surprise. How much longer do we have to wait? Should I sing a song to help pass the time? No. <laughs> Go back to the kitchen. <laughs> oh, my God, more onion sellers. <laughs> Colonel, it is I, Helga. Why are you dressed as an onion seller? Herr Flick will be suspicious. He is also disguised as an onion seller. <laughs> Good afternoon, Herr Patron. I am just a simple onion seller in search of fine and food. Sit. Yes, Herr Onion Seller. I will obtain wine and food at once. Monsieur René, huh? that onion seller there, is he another cousin? Oh, very distant, yeah. I'm beginning to recognize your cousins. <laughs> <laughs> They're all very well built. Here it is, a work of art, casserole of pigeon. <laughs> it looks very appetizing. <laughs> Will you join us? I shall be most honored. Breast or leg? I like the legs. I can vouch for the truth of this. <laughs> Where did you get pigeon? They were in a basket in the kitchen. <laughs> you fool! They were carrier pigeons. No. Yes. No. Don't start. Look. <laughs> there on the leg is a cylinder. It contains the measurements of the curve. <laughs> there is a cylinder attached to the leg of this casserole pigeon. <laughs> Uh, 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 spices have... Uh, 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 they should have been removed. Allow me. Stop! I will investigate. <laughs> Inside the cylinder, covered in gravy, there is a piece of paper with writing on it. Well, well perhaps it is the recipe. <laughs> or, 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 or maybe even the, the name and address of the pigeon. <laughs> It is in code. This will go at once to Berlin to be deciphered by experts. Congratulations, Herr Colonel. Already these disguises are producing results. <laughs> now listen very carefully. I shall say this only once. You are to take this container. I see. And what does this container contain? Balls. <laughs> Michelle, up until now, our relationship has been on a very civilized and friendly basis. If I had ever said anything to offend you, I... Bones jean. Oh. <laughs> this type of jean is colored a very pale blue. Well, I run a bar. I do know that. Natural glycerin is also colored a very pale blue. Oh, I didn't know that. But what is the connection? This is natural glycerin. Ah. Be very gentle with it. Do not drop it. Do not let anyone see it. Add it in your cellar. At 11 o'clock, there is going to be a big bang. <laughs> that was not definite. It was only a loose <laughs> What are you talking about? What are you talking about? I am asking you to add this bottle in your cellar. It is to blow up the railway line. But the railway line does not run over my cellar. <laughs> my restaurant runs over my cellar. I know that. I will be back to collect it quite soon. Well, in that case, why don't you just keep it? Because if the Germans find it, they will shoot me. Well, if they find it here, won't they shoot me? <laughs> you have a cafe. You have a bar. Why should you not have a bottle of Bull's gin? If I could think of a reason, I would give you one. <laughs> so here we go, the same refrain, the final encore. You are my love, my only love. Once more, you are my love, my only love, once more. Well, thank you for your 
your kind of clothes. <laughs> now, are there any requests? Two beers and some more cheese. <laughs> What would you like, Lieutenant? Well, I have a fancy for something a little different. What do you suggest? Maybe a small pot and lemon? Definitely, very nicely. There is Monsieur René. I have been uh, trying to catch his eye all night, but I think he is avoiding me. He has a lot on his mind at the moment, but I'm sure he is not trying to avoid you. He's too busy trying to avoid his wife. <laughs> that is very interesting. <laughs> Monsieur René. Ah, Lieutenant, uh, I, I, have you got a drink? I was asking for something a little different. What is that you have there? Oh, it's, it's, it's just a, a very exotic gin. Ah, it is new to me. What is it? Uh, balls. <laughs> Monsieur René, so far our relationship has been on a civilized and friendly basis. Ah. If I in any way. No, no, no. B-O-L-S, balls. So sorry. <laughs> it is most intriguing. I will try some. Oh, no, no, no. I cannot open the bottle just for one gin. Well, make it two balls. You <laughs> have one also. No, even for two, I cannot open it. Well, uh, perhaps she would like one as well. Oh, yes, I would love one. You do not drink on duty. Since when? Really? Since now. Perhaps you would like to give your wife one. <laughs> Out of the question. Well, well, I will buy the whole bottle. It's not for sale. Are you trying to get rid of me? <laughs> not deliberately, no. Monsieur Leclerc! Take this gin to my mother. Uh, gin? Uh, uh, I have forgotten how it smells. So long have I been in the nick. Ready? Take this and mix it with the corn for the chickens. It will help them to lay. <laughs> yes, Colonel. Good evening. Sit down. Oh, thank you, Colonel. <clears throat> now, listen, René. I will come straight to the point. If you do not get these uniforms by tonight, you will be shot. You don't beat about the bush, do you, Colonel? <laughs> do not. No, why don't you try it sometime? It's better for the nerves, especially my nerves. <laughs> well. Do we get them or not? Colonel, they are coming from London. London? Helga, the less you know, the better. Put some cheese in your ears. <laughs> I'm afraid there was a slight delay, Colonel. The tailor had to go to a bar mitzvah. A Jewish tailor? <laughs> Whatever that means. <laughs> I will speak to, Mich to, to someone who will uh, make contact. They will try to get them delivered to us tonight. Your life depends on it. So do our little toes. <laughs> Come on, little chickens. Come on. It's dinner time. It is time I am singing again. I need something to steady my nerves. You know, singing to a crowded room takes a special kind of courage. It's lucky you are so brave. <laughs> what are you doing with that bottle? Yeah, I'm just going to wet my whistle. You fool! This could blow your whistle through the top of your head. <laughs> what are you saying? I am saying it is to blow up a train. I am saying it is nitroglycerin. <laughs> <laughs> Given some to my mother and the chickens. Oh no, this is disaster. Those are the only chickens we have. What <laughs> about my mother? <laughs> that drink. Oh, it make your mama very frisky. What happened? <laughs> she got out of bed, went to pick up her slippers, and blew the door off the wardrobe. <laughs> Quick, the chickens. <laughs> Stop throwing this corn so hard. It's still gone. Where? Inside the chickens. What? Where, where are the chickens? Where they always go to lazy eggs behind the edge. 
Well, that was only five. Where is the other? The cockerel chased her into the hen house. Mm. So bang. <laughs> You are looking at a walking legend. <laughs> Look at it how you will. This is a very serious situation. Colonel, surely you know somebody who could order our release? There is only one person who could order our release. Who? Oh. Me. <laughs> Rene, huh? if they shoot us, at least I will die by your side. If you died in front of me, I'd have a better chance. <laughs> Rene, you do love me, don't you? Of course I love you, Yvette, of course. Oh, oh. Rene, oh. what do you think it will be like in heaven? Well, I don't suppose they let us do this first, huh? <laughs> Only the French would have boys and girls in the same cell. <laughs> How did you get up there? I am standing on a peasant. <laughs> have you come to get us out? No, but I have your uniforms back from the cleaners. Where are they? In the office, ready for you when you get out. But how do we get out? Here is a hacksaw for the bars. Ah, thank you. Even without bars, I can't get through this little window. I could. Yes, but you can't sign the orders. You're not senior enough. I could forge your signature. I've done it before. <laughs> now it's all coming out. <laughs> General Von... Stand still! <laughs> General Von Klinkhofen is arriving by car. He's most displeased. Somebody's blown up the railway. It was him. <laughs> Tell him. <laughs> I must go. Somebody's coming. No doubt, all going to be shot. You will no doubt wish to see a priest. Come this way. And when the horse were fighting down, he was anglacing. It is I, Leclerc. Well, I never would have guessed. <laughs> what do you want? I bring you good news. Shh. Your mother-in-law and your wife are coming to see you. This is good news? <laughs> also, I have for you... Uh, sealed on my purse. <laughs> an axe. We already have an axe, you silly old fool. <laughs> In that case, my son, up yours. <laughs> I have given them my blessing. Let me out. Bless you. Bless you. And you. Here, find this. Oh, another. You have more visitors. <laughs> Why are you putting me in here with these smelly peasants? <laughs> to say goodbye to your son-in-law. Goodbye, let us get out. <laughs> oh, really? Not now, Edith. Yes. <laughs> we have a plan. Good, what is it? <laughs> we are up to here with hacksaws. I am down to there with hacksaws. <laughs> Up of head, everything is going according to plan. Very nearly. <laughs> Don't waste time, I have to leave. Oh, it is cold. <laughs> Why have you brought me here? The angels are going to take my husband away. Mm. 
The last time it was the beliefs. <laughs> this is a very sad occasion for me, Rene. Yes, I feel the same way, Lieutenant. <laughs> oh, you French. You are so brave. Your mother-in-law has not shed one single tear. <laughs> this I believe. <laughs> so what about my wife? She is like a rock. She says she is going to sing the Marseillaise. <laughs> you wish a blindfold? Earplugs would be better. <laughs> May I shake your hand? Of course. You'll find it round the back. <laughs> <laughs> Can we get on with this, please? Oh, I nearly forgot. So they have something to aim at. <laughs> you Germans, such sticklers for accuracy. <laughs> Now? No. I will give you the signal. Is that it? <laughs> no. I am composing myself. Frontrack! Mil! Present your rifles! <laughs> now. One. Two, three, four. The Rice Children of the Nazareth. Destroy it. Ready? The days of Let our blood go to hell. Our blood shall not be shed in. Why have we stopped? It is over. Good. Let that be a lesson to you. The relatives may remove the body. Heil Hitler! Heil Hitler! May I escort me to my car? Do you think he's all right? If he is, it'll be treats on the house. If not, we found another cafe. <laughs> My poor brave brother. It is. He's still alive. He's trying to speak. Dear Emily. Are you in pain? Keep quiet. This may be his last breath words. Listen carefully. I shall say this only once. <laughs> My bum is on a thistle. <laughs> uh, Edith, um, when Monsieur Alphonse has finished his cognac, uh, show him the body in the office. But René... Uh, René's body, that's right. Yes. Uh, Monsieur Alphonse, I am sure you will forgive me if I do not come with you. It is very difficult for me, you understand. Of course, of course, monsieur. Sorry, Alphonse. Of course I've had it. 
la dame He have flour on his face. Uh, when he was arrested, he was making a roly poly pudding. <laughs> Just think, we will never see his roly poly again. Before I go, I will need the signature of the brother-in-law. <laughs> Where do you think he is at the moment? Oh, I do not know, but uh, I am sure he will join us in the bar as soon as he can. <laughs> was turning out to mourn my passing. Nouveau Rangers are playing away. <laughs> Lily, hold on to my arm. Are you going to faint? No, I cannot see. <laughs> Lily, do you think the resistance will be very cross with us because we are building the anti-tech mines in a coffin? That is their funeral. This is mine. <laughs> do you think we should goose step? No, Hans. That would be very poor taste. It's bad enough we have with us. The man who shot him. He's obeying orders. I was most upset. As I uttered the word, fire, I felt a complete brotter. This will do. They cannot see us here. You will bend over and touch your toes. Keep you in mind, Hethley. I wish to steady my binoculars. <laughs> the key. The priest has the key. <laughs> Not you, the real priest. <laughs> Where is he? He plays center out for the new young rangers. <laughs> we have had it. What is the problem? <gasps> the, the priest has forgotten the key. Shall I shoot off the lock? If it wasn't for you and your shooting, we wouldn't be here in the first place. <laughs> Can you all come back tomorrow? I won't keep until tomorrow. <laughs> Quick. Heinz. Thank 
something very strange is happening. What is that, Herr Flick? The coffin and all the mourners are heading in this direction. <laughs> to another position? No. We are quite safe here. Very amusing. <laughs> that was not so amusing. I've managed to get my lighter out of my back pocket. <laughs> but you were trying to give up smoking. <laughs> I am going to burn through the ropes that tie your wrists, and then you can untie me. Oh, good. I saw this in a film with Conrad Veidt. <laughs> Put your voice down and stand by. I am ready. What is the delay? I'm pulling up my wick to get a big flame. <laughs> Even Conrad Veidt didn't think of that. <laughs> Here we go. Ah! I have dummy. You are lighting the hairs on my wrist. <laughs> Don't be a baby. I'm not a baby. <laughs> Well done, Hans. I felt a hope go. That was the strap of my wristwatch. There's <laughs> someone coming. Try not to smolder. What is happening? Where am I? We moved the blindfold. Uh, Rene, what are you doing here? Well, I was just putting out the cat, and I was pounced on by the resistance. <laughs> Perhaps they think I am somebody else. You are the brother of the man who was shot. You are to have the honor of shooting these men who have raped the whole of France. If I may say so, that is a slight exaggeration. <laughs> Here is a gun. Now is your chance to avenge your brother. Oh, well, I, I think you should understand that my brother and I were not that close. In fact, we did not get on. No, no, he used to bully me, you know. He used to twist the ear of my teddy bear and, <laughs> and, and pinch my conkers. <laughs> No, I know it does not sound like much now, but when you are little, you remember such things. I have placed in the chamber two bullets. Do your duty. May I have just one last request? We are supposed to have the last request. <laughs> Silence, pig, dog! Hyena. Hyena! <laughs> uh, I would like to savor my moment of revenge alone. We understand. Quick, follow me. Oh, that was a narrow squeak. Rene, you must get us out of here. We cannot go on helping you if we are shot. It is all your fault for saying I was my own twin brother. If you had said I was a, a, a distant cousin or something, I would not be in this mess. <laughs> You're in a mess. What about the mess we're in? What am I going to do? Cut these ropes and we can leg it out the window. <laughs> What a, wait a moment. Uh, how do I explain that you have escaped? Will you like it as well? <laughs> oh, look out! You have not shot them yet. Uh, yeah, no, no. Uh, well, I thought I would just torture them a bit, you know. <laughs> you know how one does. J just in case they can reveal any of Hitler's plans or, 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 or secret weapons or, or where he is going on his holidays. <laughs> My unit has just intercepted a parachute drop. We are very puzzled to know what this means. There are two German uniforms and two identical paintings. How strange. More than strange. 
The names of these two officers are on the uniforms, and they were dropped by the RAF. That is because we are British officers in disguise. Isn't that so, Charles? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, Henry Old Bean. <laughs> <laughs> You think it is a very long way? They go us in circles, so who knows? But I feel this is the correct road. Good sense of direction. If only we had a compass, we could check our bearings. Look out for the Greek bear. <laughs> there are many clouds and few stars. You fool, Hans! Not up there! It's an inn outside Nouveau. <laughs> I never mentioned it before. I don't tell you everything. Listen, there's a car coming. I will halt it. <laughs> uh, Herr Flick, you would be pleased to see the captain and I have escaped. That is quite evident. We have good news. We have found at last the missing painting of the fallen Madonna with the big boobies. <laughs> Hans, give the painting to Herr Flick. <laughs> the Fuhrer will be delighted. Good. I will take it at once to a place of safety. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, have a little patience, will you? You're waking up the old house. <laughs> For the sake of heaven. Now then, where is the key? Just a minute! What is happening? We were both aroused by the banging. <laughs> I was aroused when I saw the girls with the candle. <laughs> I said, all right. Who is it? <laughs> Colonel, Colonel, you are safe. Oh, oh. What a night. What a night. <laughs> the news is good. We have handed the forgery to Herr Flick to send to the Fuhrer, and we have the original painting for you to hide behind the bricks in your cellar. And then we can all sleep soundly in our beds oh. once more. Oh. Give it to me quickly, in case you have been followed. Now then. Ah. Ah, the the fallen with the big rubies. Yes. <laughs> oh, the trouble you have given us all. Uh. Well, take a good look, my friends. You will not see them again until after the war is over. <laughs> what is written on that little label in the corner? I don't know. It is in English. I don't understand. I speak a little English. I will try to translate for you. Oh. <clears throat> Dear Resistance, please note this is the forgery. You gave her flick the wrong one! You're cross, aren't you? <laughs> well, what do we do now? We must get the painting back before Herr Flick can send it to the Führer. And who is going to do that? You are. <laughs> and if you don't, I you will have, have you me shot. shot. Yeah. <laughs> everyone to bed. Uh, life is back to normal. Helga, go at once to Herr Flick and let him wring the information out of you. Yes, Colonel. <laughs> I see a typical cheese salesman entering my cafe. <laughs> Excuse me. Well, yes. I have Thank you. Brie yes. and yes. cheeses yes. you will buy. Shut up. My cheese is. Shut up! Shut up! <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, cheese seller. I am prepared to purchase all your wares. Oh, how uh, oh, very fortunate. Uh, uh, never before have I had such a good day for yes, selling yes. the cheeses. Good. <laughs> well, that means you can go home without delay. <laughs> it is I, Leclerc. 
Well, I never. <laughs> the radio is already connected. And the spare battery is in the Dutchy Dam with the knobs on. <laughs> the face of that cheese seller seems strangely familiar. Ah, yeah, well, yeah, well it is a very small village and uh, we do a lot of interbreeding. <laughs> I believe you have a luxury for me. Huh? Oh, yes. Yes, a little packet of your favorite cigars. Yes, I... So much trouble, it is most touching. Thank you. <laughs> I... I do not know this tune. <laughs> do not know it all that well myself. <laughs> Cheers! <laughs> I beg your pardon. The <laughs> is enjoying his new bicycle. <laughs> I am glad to hear this. <laughs> Who is Pierre? Oh, he's, he's just a young lad in the village. Did you give him the bicycle? No, no. <laughs> then why are you telling me he is enjoying it? Well, uh, there is so little to enjoy these days. Uh, I was just making conversation. <laughs> Philippe and Jean are going for a swim. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I expect so. It's a very small place and there is only one river. Eloise is expecting a visit from the store. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> who, who, who is responsible? I expect it is Pierre. <laughs> he has the bicycle. <laughs> Listen carefully. I will meet you behind the woodshed. One o'clock. <laughs> See you later, then. <laughs> Lieutenant Gruber, he's very handsome. <laughs> Not you, too. <laughs> I should be a lot happier when Helga and Herr Flicker here. Otherwise, Rene could find himself in quite a lot of trouble. Never mind, Hans. We have an alibi. We are here. Honey, I brought your onion soup. Oh, oh. no, no, no. What are you? Wait. What are you doing? Edith and Rene are away on a secret mission, huh? and they may never return. I am obeying my daughter's last request. Huh. Uh, what is this? Keep an eye on the till. <laughs> <laughs> I could keep the eye on the till. <laughs> Yes, you will also have your hand in the till. <laughs> what am I to do? I can't help it. And now, fellow officers of the victorious German army, in accordance with our ancient Bavarian tradition, I give you for your entertainment, Gunilla, Erika, Hilda, Inga, Yvette, and Maria, the Hitler
Our girls make very good boys, do they not? Yes, indeed. One could easily be fooled. <laughs> hey, Hitler! Hey, Hitler! Do not let the fact that I am a senior member of the Gestapo and did not receive an invitation to your gathering stop you from having a jolly time. Have we your permission to carry on, Herr Flick? Of course. Albert, music! Who is serving the drinks? Help yourself, Herr Flick. It's home free. This is good. Morning, honey. Ah, good morning, Lieutenant. This is the man that shot me. He fancies me like mad. <laughs> Perhaps it is the apron. Your cheeks are a very good, fresh color today. <laughs> and you have an impish look in your eye. <laughs> it has suddenly disappeared. Not a drink. What a good idea. <laughs> open this door. Edith, open the door. I have found it. I have found it! I have found the will of my late husband. There is no need to make such a song and dance about it. Uh, give it to me, Edith. Uh, after all, I am the executor. It is not addressed to you. No, but it would go without saying that Rennie would want his brother as an executor. It has gone without saying. <laughs> Gather on, everyone, while I read to you the last will and testament of my dear departed husband who was shot by the Germans. Orders, you know. <laughs> he leave everything to me. I, René Artois, being of sound mind... I would dispute that for a start. <laughs> do hereby leave all of which I stand possessed to my dear and faithful wife, who has comforted me and filled me with joy during the happy days of my marriage. I wrote that on the honeymoon. <laughs> what a beautiful phrase. <laughs> Look, there is something written on the back. Ah, no. P.S. to Yvette. Uh, uh, I can hardly read it. It is as if his hand was shaking. <laughs> <laughs> to Yvette, who has served so devotedly under me. <laughs> I leave the collapsible so far in the parlour. <laughs> That so far is not collapsible. It is, unless you put a book under it. <laughs> PPS to Maria. I leave this small billiard table, which has given us both so many moments of pleasure. <laughs> I never saw you playing in there. Oh, if René would make me shut the door and put a chair under the knob. <laughs> what were you doing that you did not want to be interrupted? Why ask me? I am dead, remember? <laughs> anyway... He has done the right thing by me. Everything is now mine to have and to hold till death do me part. He was a good man. There was something soft and sensitive about him. Although, like you, he could be a little distant at times. We are a cautious family. We will drink to his memory. Yeah. Well, do not pour too much. That is my best cognac. His best cognac. And now... It is my best cognac. To his memory. To Oh. It is over. It is done. What are you up to now? I am going to buy myself a new hat. Why do you want a new hat? You must remember, I am a rich widow in the prime of my life. This evening, Mama will promenade me in the square. Some handsome man will gaze upon me in my new hat. Who is that, he will ask. It is the rich widow at was, they will reply. Oh, how young and slender she looks. I must pay my respects to her, he will say. And maybe tomorrow morning, he will be at my door, bearing a beautiful bouquet of sweet-smelling roses. Provided his guide dog can find the owls. <laughs> Is the coast clear? We are 50 miles from the coast. Aren't we? 
something very important has just come up. How long have you been out there? <laughs> the two airmen have left the nunnery. Good. Now perhaps Yvette and I can continue to discuss the menu for tonight. They left because the Germans came to search for them. They are on the run. Well, that is your problem, not mine. I don't care if I never see their stupid faces ever again. Hey, yeah. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> it is the airmen. I would never have known. <laughs> well, look, do not let them come in here. You speak the language, tell them to go away. Go. <clears throat> now, listen, chaps. René's been awfully decent putting you up here, but you have outstayed your welcome. We, we, we can't walk around as nuns all day. <laughs> the daddies keep trying to chat us up. Didn't they suspect the moustache? You think mine's big, you should see the mother superiors. <laughs> We're not going back to the nunnery. Fairfax mucked up his needlework and we had to spend hours scrubbing the steps. <laughs> Look! <laughs> Why is he showing you his knees? He was a scrubber at the nunnery. <laughs> no wonder they threw him out. <laughs> well, no, tell them to go away. Listen to me, René. You are a vital link in the escape route mm. for British airmen. This is a safe house. Not for me, it isn't. <laughs> Let us come to the crunch. The crunch? The nitty gritty. <laughs> are you a collaborator or are you with the resistance? Is that thing loaded? I am desperate. I have won up the spout. <laughs> that would make you desperate. <laughs> well? Look, I am on your side, Michel. At the same time, I have a business to run. Now, I cannot go around being rude to the Germans. Not in front of their faces, anyway. I will put out my tongue at them from time to time when their backs are turned, or put a little extra salt in their soup. But we must be reasonable. It is the colonel and the captain. <gasps> the colonel is backing under the tree. Oh, no. I think they are coming in here. Oh, my God, he must not see them. Get them out of there. Through the window. No, quick. they can't go that way. There is a driver with a gun. Oh, quick, through here. Uh, René, the colonel and captain are approaching. Well, keep them busy while I think of a good reason why I've got two nuns in my back room. <laughs> the organ fund with my reputation? Go, go. Keep them busy. Greetings, colonel. Uh, is there any refreshment that you would like that is not on a high shelf? No, thank you, Maria. <laughs> we have business with René. Is he in the back room? No. Good. We wish to be private. We will wait in there while you find him. Oh, my God. Quick, get them down. Uh, take these, Yvette. Take these. Uh -huh. And I'm out. <laughs> Just stand back. <laughs> Wouldn't you rather wait in my room? Stand aside. <laughs> Am I interrupting something? <laughs> Rene is having a special service for his late departed brother. He's not dead. The church don't know that. They were going to have a big one in the cathedral. But it's worked out cheaper. <laughs> His lips are muttering in silent prayer. It is very moving. In that case, take your hat off. <laughs> Who is Frank Harris? He was a prophet. Hans, give it to me. <laughs> I'd no idea they played leapfrog in heaven. <laughs> Not now, Maria. No, it is Michelle from the Resistance. Uh, what does she want? Well, how do I know? Come on, come follow me. Michelle? Michelle, where are you hiding? I am here. <laughs> now listen very carefully. I shall say this only once. <laughs> I have good news. I have come here to collect the British airmen. I expect you will be very glad to get rid of them. You can say that again. I don't suppose she will. <laughs> Further instructions will be sent to you by secret messenger, disguised as a simple farm worker. Why do I need further instructions? I thought this was the end of it all. You forget your position. 
Your humble cafe is the headquarters of the organization to assist escaping airmen, to add explosives, to pass messages, and to organize sabotage. It is all happening here. <laughs> I hope you'll tell people who want to marry you the sort of trouble you can get them into. It is like getting into bed with a time bomb. I have entered at it. I expect it put them off. Oh, they cannot wait to light the fuse. <laughs> it is Yvette Maria. Oh, does nobody hear that? Shut up, you silly old bat. Do you want to wake up the old neighborhood? Get them down. I am weak. I am feeble. I want to see my daughter married before the good Lord sends an angel to take me away. Oh, my God, already they have come for me. <laughs> I must be more important than I thought. <laughs> but why is that one carrying a candle? Because where you are going, it will be very dark. Oh, <laughs> not my mother like that. It is the airmen, mother. Oh. We hid them while you were asleep. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, oh, I'm going mad. I am seeing flashing knobs. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, hello. This is Night Talk receiving you loud and not very clear. <laughs> Pass your message over. The flashing bed knobs are not reliable. The flashing bed knobs are not reliable. Get the code book. What does that mean? My wife's mother does not understand flashing knobs. <laughs> Over. Hold on while we try to decode your message to find out what it means. It means my wife's mother is a silly old bat who does not understand flashing bed knobs. Now pass your message over. The loved ones will be carried away in a chariot. Even in heaven, they know about my bad legs. <laughs> this means the plan is coming tonight to pick up the British airmen. I say, chaps, there's a plane coming for you tonight. Ho, oh, wacko! <laughs> well, get a move on, it's Toodle Pip, and back to dear old Blighty. Good day! <laughs> Give the signal. What signal? Two hoots of the owl. Edith, I am a cafe owner. I do not do impersonations. <laughs> I will do it. To it, to it, What sort of an owl was that? Apparently, one that is unappreciated by the bird up there. A critic, perhaps. <laughs> Don't move. I have four baskets with me. It is hard to get good help these days. <laughs> Walk this way. And them out. What are these for? These are your covers. Oh. Oh. Your <laughs> cover is to be mushroom pickers. If you are stopped, you are on your way to the fields to pick mushrooms for the restaurant. Ah, this is a good cover. The best ones pop up at night. <laughs> Give them the guns. They're loaded, but they're not cocked. Why do we need guns? Mushrooms do not fight back. If the Germans find you helping British airmen to escape, you will have to shoot your way out. Where are the airmen? They are safely hidden. Follow me. Henriette. Oh, we are going to get wet. Sissy! Follow me. Inside. Here. 
Well, it is I, Anne de Clare. I am disguised as a simple milky maid. You looked the same when you were a simple farmhand. It is the war, monsieur. We are very short of staff. Where are the airmen? I shall take you to them. This is Dadia. Here's Claudette. Here is Sophia. Bridget. And this, Flight Lieutenant Fairfax. Doing here. He is waiting uh, to be milked. Where is Castas? I'm in charge of the canteen. <laughs> this end. The other seems a bit small. And that is what happened to my washing up gloves. I don't mind my asking, what are we all doing here? The plane is due in ten minutes. It will land the other side of the woods across the road. The road is controlled by the Germans. Should we encounter them, they will not suspect the six mushroom pickers and an herd of cows. Ah. Are you trying to tell me that the Germans will not suspect that cow? <laughs> not when he is mixed amongst the others? Monsieur Leclerc, it is time. You and the farmer must lead out the cows. Immediately. Big man. I think it is a transport plane. Why, may? How can that great big plane land in this little field? It is not landing. Look. <laughs> <laughs> they have released two parachutes. They are going to draw up the other side of the wood. Quick! They must have landed somewhere near here. What are you doing? I'm going no further until someone tells me what's going on. <laughs> I agree. Ah, I see something. <laughs> it is a copper. I say, is anyone down there? Oh, my God. Not another stupid Englishman. <laughs> I say, are you from HQ? We rather thought the plane would land. Change of plan. We're trying out a new escape package. We'd better get you down, I suppose. I seem to be a bit stuck. If Rennie held me up in his strong arms, I could reach up and pull him down. He could hold me in his strong arms. Oh, but uh, I might drop you, precious. <laughs> Come along. This way. Now. Uh, up you get. Uh, quickly, Maria. <laughs> One of the barmaids has pulled the policeman's trousers down. <laughs> it's all go, isn't it? Oh, you me. What? Oh. What? Oh, no. oh. <laughs> 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 that was all rather exciting. Why have they sent us another Englishman? They sent me over because I speak French. Thank heavens for that. They have sent him because he speaks French. Oh. Hello, everybody. <laughs> Do we have our own tongue? <laughs> <laughs> I have brung greetings from British intelligence headquarters. What does he say? I think he brings greetings from intelligence headquarters. I have disguised as policeman, so I am over 
to move a boot with complete freedom. You think he will get away with that accent? As long as he does not speak, yes. We will tell everyone that he comes from a remote village in the country. On the outskirts of Peking. You picked up this package. This is the escope package. You must heed it in your sealer. What was that? The escape package. You must add it in the cellar. How does he know I have a cellar? In London, we are not stupid. We know every move you moke. <laughs> Do we have a key or a tin opener? <laughs> After all, who would nick an armored car? Wear this. What for? If the resistance take a pot shot at you, it will bounce off. Bounce off? I am not sticking my head out of there. I'll drive. Start the engine! Keep your voice down. Sorry. That little knob in front. Oh, uh, Give it a bit more choke. Uh, uh, forward! <laughs> I said forward, you're going backwards! Uh, Did I hit something? The colonel's car! He will do his nub! <laughs> Never mind. He will blame the resistance and shoot a couple of peasants. <laughs> what am I saying? How easy it is to slip into the ways of being a Nazi. <laughs> Why have we left the main road? A motorcycle was following us. Don't worry, this lane leads to the railway line. Is he still following? Just a minute. I will have a look. <laughs> Can you see the motorcycle? <laughs> Not at the moment. <laughs> I can see the railway line. Stop here. I can hear the train coming. Oh, dear. Pass me a shell. Well, where are they? They must be in here somewhere. To drive the glove compartment. <laughs> uh, have you found anything? Just some lady's underwear. <laughs> some shaving lotion. <laughs> ah, well, ah, I have one. Good. Well, hurry up. It is getting nearer. I think it is loaded. Now, I have to aim for the third wagon from the end. Yes, good luck. Put your fingers in your ears. There may be a big bang. <laughs> I can see it. One, two, three. That's the one. <laughs> Missed. <laughs> Another shell. <laughs> Can you get a little bit nearer? No, I cannot. One, two, three. You have blown up the signal box. I think the barrel is bent. <laughs> there goes the train. There goes Hitler's sausage. <laughs> we should catch it up further down the line. No. The way I drive, I would never catch it. And the way you shoot, you would never eat it. <laughs> I think we go home. What, what, what is that in the road? It is a farm wagon. It is very badly parked. <laughs> Get out and move it. Ready? Thoughts, I will wait a bit. <laughs> Quick, that engine chief. 
you won't. No! I wish to surrender. Don't shoot! Don't give up! Step! It is the white flag of surrender. Look! It is Rene! You traitor! So, you have joined the Germans. This gentleman kindly helped me to borrow the tank so, so we could blow up the train. The one you refused to blow up because you were blowing up an ammunition lorry. That is why we are here. Well, you're wasting your time. As soon as we heard you were going to blow it up, we cancelled it. Who told you? He did. <laughs> <laughs> not Michel, it, it is all part of a very complicated plan to do with Hitler and a sausage. And a lot of paintings which would take too long to explain. I don't understand half of it myself. <laughs> the staff for staff car is approaching. What? Our mission is blown. We must scop her. Quick! Are you doing with Hubert's little tank? I too would like to know the answer to that question. Well, Colonel, you see. It's quite clear to see what has happened here, Flick. Rene overheard a plot by the resistance to blow up an ammunition lorry. Assisted by the captain, he borrowed the armored car and, with great bravery, found the roadblock and fought off the resistance, who even now can be seen running across the fields. I was just about to say all that. In <laughs> a very fierce battle, my armored car is covered with little dents. <laughs> and there is mud all over the wheels. I'm not entirely convinced by this story. I have found proof, Herr Flick. See, this device is commonly used by the resistance when they're going to blow something up. What nonsense. This is an ordinary tire pump, which has been discarded by a passing motorist. This would not even blow up a tire. <laughs> well, Nick, you have exploded the Gestapo car. <laughs> well, that's nothing to worry about. Gestapo can always get another car from Berlin. I shall not be informing Berlin of this incident. <laughs> I do not wish to look a right nana. <laughs> you fools! You blew the covers! <laughs> Captain Kuba, you will drive us home. What's going on now, Fairfax? A lot of girls in the Escanties are climbing onto men's bicycles. Oh, come on. What's really going on? longer am I to be ignored? Oh, oh, oh Edis, where have you been? I have not seen you for days. Do not be silly, Mama. I gave you your lunch. <laughs> Listen, I have good news. Huh? Monsieur Alphonse, the undertaker, is calling. Oh, undertaker. <laughs> so little time. <laughs> no, no, Mama. I think he is in love with me. Oh, it is so romantic. I think he is coming to propose to me. Oh. Do you remember? We met him in the square. He has a moustache. Oh, yes, yes. I remember him well. He had a little stiff one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he has such manners. And today this arrived, and on it was his little card with a love message. Oh. Uh, swiftly... And we style. 
<laughs> he has an eye opinion of himself. <laughs> no, 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 Mama. The other side. I always think engagement rings are such romantic, pretty things. And so before my life is done, I would dearly like to give you one. <laughs> It's the first part again. <laughs> Quick, shut the door. Where is my wife? She's upstairs, dressed up like the dinner of a dog. <laughs> She's going to parade herself yet again in the town square. Oh, but Rene, you should be happy. If she marries, you will be free. And without a solitary sou. We will have money. We will borrow explosives from the resistance, blur the safe, nick the money, an ad in a little garret in Paris. And make love day and night until the war is over. Oh. Oh. The very thought of it makes me go weak at the knees. <laughs> oh, not her again. Now listen very carefully. I shall say this only once. <laughs> the escape package brought by this British agent was damaged in the landing. You must help us to mend it. Mend it? I don't even know what it is. It is a balloon made of silk. Filled with hot air, it will lift the basket with the airmen and, with a favorable wind, take them back across the channel. Brilliant. And what do you want, a needle and cotton? <laughs> Some of the fabric is torn away and missing. We need silk to replace it. Silk? Where am I supposed to find silk? The urgent crop tree has a plan, which you will explain. You must go and get your hands on girls' knockers. <laughs> he means silk knickers. <laughs> Sorry. Perhaps my French cod be butter. <laughs> Give up my knickers for France. <laughs> Always the patriot. <laughs> All the girls in the resistance will sacrifice their knickers. <laughs> when I hear words like that, it brings a lump to my throat. <laughs> but even that will not be enough. Well, how many pairs of knock knickers do you require? At least 40 or, or even 50. <laughs> I will try for 50. <laughs> well, we are hoping to start about seven, but it is best you get there early. We are expecting a crowd. <laughs> and there will be coffee and sandwiches afterwards. <laughs> Whatever happens. Tell them we are hoping for an home win. <laughs> I'll see you then. Ooh, so many friends. <laughs> Oh, Rene! Oh, oh. oh, I admire you. You are like a rock. Uh, I know this to be a quality you appreciate in a man. Oh, <laughs> oh but I'm so worried. Why? Well, I hear Monsieur Alphonse is a crack shot. There was a competition. He put one of his balls through a playing card at 20 bases. <laughs> Quite a feat. <laughs> this is how he started in the undertaking business. <laughs> Yvette, normally I would be worried by such news, but I have a secret arrangement with the colonel. Hmm. At the time of the duel, he will be on exercises with tanks and troops and machine guns and things, and he has promised to take care of the undertaker. Oh! oh could you not take care of your wife at the same time? <laughs> Uh, I could mention it, I suppose. <laughs> I might be pushing my luck. I'm talking of pushing my luck. Eh? Oh, it's that English idiot who thinks he can speak our language. Good die to you. <laughs> you see, he has heard about the duel. Are we alone? <laughs> I wish to tick to you. <laughs> tick? <laughs> he means talk. Ah. Yeah, we are a loon, so tick away. <laughs> the 
English airmen are no linger in the cow. <laughs> oh, good. Well, where are they then? I will kill them. <laughs> in here, chaps. <laughs> you will never get away with that. You cannot pass those two idiots off as French policemen. I'll give them quick curse in the French long watch. <laughs> it's nose to spike your tongue. <laughs> Pleased to meet you, sir. <laughs> Whack. Germans, quick, in the back room. Uh, officer, if you wish to search my premises, uh, I have nothing to hide. Start in the back room. Take care of the krauts. Good, I'll show you to Listen carefully. The balloon is ready. It will be taken and hidden in the old ruined barn five kilometers to the north of town. When the wind is favorable, a message will be sent. You, René, will guide the airmen to the barn where they will take off and head for home. Oh, I, I, I do not wish to be a wet blanket, but I do have a duel in the morning, you know. What if I am killed? Oh, then Monsieur Leclerc will guide them. <laughs> I must go now to the ironmonger. He is preparing the blue lamps which will provide the hot air for the balloon. Oh. René, a flick has been here. A flick of the Gestapo? Mm. Quick, we will have scooped through the winder. No, oh, he'll be getting into his car. He will see you. What did he want? He had not seen these two disguised as policemen, had he? No, he was looking for the colonel. He has gone round to their headquarters. Did he want to check on his sausage? No. <laughs> his table and ordered two large portions of hot pot to take away. Oh, that means a nice quiet dinner with Elga in the dungeon this evening. Oh, be brave, girls. Dear girls. Before proceeding, do either of you wish to apologize? Well, I may have been a bit a Certainly not. <laughs> behaved like a pig, you will die like a pig. <laughs> Very well, monsieur. You are showing a lot of metal, René. What? <laughs> the pistols are loaded. Choose. You choose, monsieur. You will start back to back. Upon the command, march. You will walk ten paces. Upon the command, halt. You will halt. <laughs> Upon the command, turn. You will turn and fire. Is this clear? Crystal clear. Right, we must proceed. First, my personal farewells. Rene. The French way. <laughs> Monsieur Alphonse. <laughs> Thank you, Monsieur. But I hardly know you. <laughs> Farewell, Edith. <laughs> Farewell, Edith. <laughs> Edith, I am talking to you. I am about to get shot here and you take no notice. But I am just catching up on the gossip. Bye-bye, <laughs> Benny. <laughs> <laughs> Maria, Yvette, farewell. <laughs> Madame La Montaigne, farewell. <laughs> Who's Madame La Montaigne? <laughs> so, gentlemen, let us take up our positions. Back to back. Excuse me one moment. The 
Jeremy. I have bad news, uh, Lieutenant. Colonel von Strom and Captain Gehring have been arrested by the Gestapo. And the manoeuvres have been cancelled. Cancelled? <laughs> Are the Gestapo allowed to do this? I shall investigate. Quite right. After the duel. Well, but do you not think you should do it right away? I mean, I mean, we can do this any old time. Get on with it. <laughs> back to back. <laughs> Cock. Your hammer, monsieur. Watch. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Please, Yvette. Any news of René? Not a word. The place is not the same without him. It's all clear. Familiar, particularly that one. I am trying very hard not to be familiar, monsieur. I have it. You are a relation of René, who works behind the bar. Oh, very distant. You have very hairy legs. They run in the family. René, it is you. Please, Lieutenant, do not give me away. Don't worry, your secret is safe with me. No, no, you do not understand. Yes, I do. <laughs> I had an uncle with the same leanings. <laughs> Every Shrove Tuesday, he would dress up as a pancake girl. <laughs> I suppose you think I am a coward? On the contrary, I think it takes great courage to come out in the open and dress that way. <laughs> oh my God, Germans. They are coming to this table. Don't worry. I will cover. Mademoiselle, a dance. What? Oh, well, no, I, I don't. I'm not very good. Don't worry. I will lead. Are they watching us? Don't worry. Just be normal. I'm doing my best. <laughs> we will do a few more bars. Then I will put you in my little tank and take you back to my place until it dies down. <laughs> uh, Lieutenant, uh, do you feather? Of course. <laughs> uh, just leave me here with my friends, will you? You're not really dressed for a tank. I think I'd better go and warm it up for you. Yeah, I, I, if you need a push start, just let me know. I'll, I'll get the rest of the girls. <laughs> Ah! No, I... I did not know who it was I was challenging to a duel. What? You, the leader of the escape route. Oh. Oh, let me kiss the hem of your dress. <laughs> please, 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 Monsieur Alphonse, you embarrass me. Oh, tell me what to do. I will follow you anywhere. Well, in, a... in a minute, I am going to have to go to the little girl's room. <laughs> oh, madame. I could not come between you and this. <laughs> this perhaps the bravest man in France. Henceforth, I will admire you from afar. Good day to you all. Vive la France. Uh, vive de Gaulle. Who? You know, de Gaulle, uh, the one with the big ooter. <laughs> of course, vive de Gaulle. <laughs> Thank heavens he has gone. That is all very well for you, but what am I to tell my friends? I cannot be seen out with a coward. I have the explanation. You will tell them that during the duel, a bumblebee flew down his trousers at a critical moment, causing him to run into the river. But the nearest river is three miles away. <laughs> it was a very big bee. <laughs> I 
cannot say what an honor it is for me to assist you, Monsieur René. The bravest man in France. <laughs> He's just escaped death by Gestapo torture. And without thought of personal danger, is even now helping the British airmen to escape. I am quite a character, am I not? <laughs> Someone is knocking on the coffin. Whoa! What are you knocking for, you old bat? You are supposed to be dead. I wish to go to the bathroom. Oh, you have to wait. This is not a corridor, Urse. Do not speak like that to my mother. You must be kind to her. It was your idea she should be the cops. She is the nearest thing we have. Get back to your feet. Wagons! Roll! Wagon! <laughs> Not much further, chap. Jolly good. Oh, jolly good. <laughs> KV, Jerry's on the horizon. Oh, it looks like a roadblock. Somebody is disobeying the curfew. Funeral processions are allowed, Herr Colonel. I wonder why René is riding in the front. I wonder why the two corpses in the second hearse were sitting up and chatting to each other. <laughs> I think it is possible that René is finally getting rid of the British airmen. So that life can return to normal like he promised. Hans, tell the sergeant to let them pass. This is a funereal. We are borrowing some biddies. <laughs> biddies? Dead biddies. And kiffins. Proceed. Let them proceed! General von Klinkerhofen! What is this? A funeral, Herr General. I see. <laughs> Opens the coffin. It is my brother's wife's mother. She died of the plague. What plague is this? It's a plague that kills brother's wife's mothers. <laughs> Opens the coffin. <laughs> if this spreads across Europe, we've all had it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, quickly. <laughs> Sit down. Uh, Colonel, how are you today? Uh, how is the war going? Do you have the half-time score? <laughs> yes, that is what I want to talk to you about, René. Now, I know you have helped some British airmen to escape. Oh, well, uh, but I prepared to wipe the slate clean. Oh, thank you, Colonel. But the Colonel says you have got to promise to stop helping the resistance. Oh, uh, of course, Colonel. Now, will you promise me, on your honor, Oh, well, Colonel, you must understand, I, I am in business. Uh, some of the resistance might very well be my customers, without my knowing, Don't be devious, René. Promise me, on your honor. Well... On your honor as a Frenchman. Oh, well, that is different. You have my word. <laughs> Good, you may buy us a drink. Mm. René! René! The most dreadful thing has happened. There's a whole sausage in the kitchen. Well, what is so dreadful about that? Somebody has removed one. The one with the little swastika on it. The one with the little swastika on it? That belongs to Herr Flick of the Gestapo. It is his personal sausage. It is the one containing the painting of the fallen Madonna with big boobies. <laughs> Rolled up. 
<laughs> Don't get confused, Hans. It contains only the forgery. Yes, the real one is still safe in my cellar. There you are. You have nothing to worry about. I, on the other hand, do have something to worry about. What if Air Flick asks for it back? Tell him it has been nicked. He will have me shot. No, he will not. I'm the commandant here. Herr Flick has no authority to have you shot. He will have to ask the colonel, and he will have you shot. <laughs> that makes me feel much better. René? 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 Your wife is trying to attract your attention. Take no notice. It will not be anything important. It may be very important. She may wish to sing another song. Really? Good one. Yes. <laughs> what is it? The grandfather clock in the back room needs winding. Edith, we have no grandfather clock. It is code. Do you never read your code book? It means the resistance is in the back room. Oh, egg. <laughs> Rene, that English idiot who thinks he can speak French is outside. <laughs> Good morning. <laughs> It is not moaning, it is evening. Now, what do you want? Michelle of the Resistance washes to tick to you. <laughs> she has had a nasty accident by failing off a drain poop. <laughs> All right, you know the code book. What is he talking about? Carry her this wee. <laughs> and do not let her drip. <laughs> she has strewned her back and has also a compost fricture of the left lung. Listen very carefully. I shall whisper this only once because I am in great pain. Her log is in plister of porridge. <laughs> My God, what did she land in? I have a plan to get rid of the British airmen by air. Oh, no, not that balloon again. No. In the museum is an exact replica of the plan used by Pierre Leconte to cross the channel in 1910. Pierre Leconte? I have never heard of him. Oh, think back, you must have done. <laughs> it was uh, not in the pepper. He endeavoured to cross the channel before Blerio. He crashed. But the plan is still airworthy, except that there is no engine. What, what good is it without an engine? Well, the engine of a lawn mower would give sufficient power. So, what do you want me to do about it? Steal the plan, find a motor, and contact me in Bed 3, Ward 7, Nouvion General Hospital. <laughs> she has pissed out. <laughs> Away, Hans. I can see the ambush. They're in position. Now, oh, where is Rene with the money? He's late. Maybe he was arrested by the troops at the roadblock. You underestimate me, Hans. I have equipped him with a disguise that will enable him to pass freely through the countryside. <laughs> I did it stop me at the bus. Shut up! <laughs> you never underplay anything. <laughs> well, little bridge. Huh? That is where we are to meet the girls at the communist resistance. <laughs> there is a bridge over there. That is where we are to meet René the Café on his party. They will be disguised as Germans. Germans? <laughs> <laughs> There is the bridge. To the left, you will be observing the girls of the communist resistance. They will be in possession of the sausage. Beyond the bridge, you will see the cafe owner and his party disguised as German soldiers. They will be in possession of the ransom money. Everything is proceeding according to plan. Not much to look at, not much to see. Just glad I'm living and lucky to be. But I've got a someone who's crazy for me. I'm funny that way. Porter, do you have the money? Yes, we have the money. Do you have the sausage? It is here. Bring the money forward.
Place it on the ground. Retire ten paces. When we have checked the money, then you will get the sausage. What? What is going on here? This is very suspicious. Eric, Kurt, sit! <laughs> These communists, they trust nobody. It is all there. Do not worry, we will get it all back again when the colonel's troops survive. Where are they? In a moment, they will arrive at the rendezvous, recover the money, and return it to us. It is correct. Uh, check it again, if you like. Where have they got to? Here is your sausage. <laughs> Come here, you naughty boy. Come here. Come here with that sausage. What? What? Come here. It is a trap. Quick, into the woods. Oh. A dog has just apprehended the Gestapo sausage. Arrest him. <laughs> Three resistance girls are escaping. We will pursue them. Hans, our pensions. Quick. <laughs> Sit down. Now, <clears throat> tell René of your plan. Monsieur Leclerc, the forger, has been secretly slipping away to the cellar. I have spied on him. He is forging money. We could give to Monsieur our friend's purged money. Mm. Edith, Leclerc is not a good forger. But I know Monsieur Alphonse. He will not even look at the money. He will put it straight back in his mattress. He is dead stingy. It is deceitful and underhand. It is a good plan. <laughs> How do we persuade Monsieur Leclerc to reveal to us where he has hidden his secret herd? Monsieur Leclerc is here. Leave this to me. Ah, you wish to see me? Yeah, Monsieur Leclerc, I do not wish to spread panic, but the cafe is on fire. Oh, <laughs> well, I shall go to... Ah! Ah! My God, my savings! My life's haunted savings! <laughs> my money! My money! Oh, Officer Crabtree, can I get you a cognac? No, I am not a lewd to drunk when I am on death. <laughs> I'm amazed that no one has penetrated your disguise. I have been licky, but I have had some narrow squawks. <laughs> I wish to spook with René. Kill him and get me a kiffy. <laughs> René? Good morning. Ah, officer. <laughs> How kind of you to patronize my humble cafe. What are you doing here, you stupid nit? You're going to get us all nicked? Michelle has a massage for you. <laughs> Sat here and she will gin you at this table. <laughs> ah, I must be a boot, my bossness. <laughs> a policeman's lit is not a hippie win. <laughs> and he is supposed to be on our side. <laughs> Very carefully, I shall say this only once. <laughs> Captain Oot is waiting for Peter Pan in Never Never Land. There would be very little point in your saying that twice. <laughs> I have no idea what it means. How are you ever going to help us if you do not learn your code book? It means the plan of escape for the British airmen has been approved by London. Good. What plan? 
escaping the airplane from the museum. Oh, surely you are not going ahead with that airbrained scheme. It hasn't even got an engine. We have stolen from General von Klinkerhofen the engine of his motor mower. Michel, he will do his motor. You are going to hide it for us. Where is it? We will leave it here. No one will suspect it is the bus chair of your mother-in-law. More of the cursed enemy approach. Come, Lisette. We will melt away. <laughs> You sent for me, Herr Flick? Yes, Helga. You are three minutes late. My duties with the colonel end at 5.30. I have to tidy the office and then I have to have a schnapps with him. I hope that you did not enjoy it. Not at all. <laughs> Good. You may kiss me. <laughs> Also, you had a cheese biscuit. <laughs> the colonel always insists that with my drink, I also have a little nibble. <laughs> now, pay attention. I will shortly be inviting you to the Gestapo club. Are you pleased? Of course, Herr Flick. To be in the club with the Gestapo will be a great honor. <laughs> I know. You will be my partner at the annual Gestapo dance in Berlin. First, there will be a banquet with the traditional boar's head, baron of beef, frankfurters, strudel, sauerkraut, and oodles of beer. <laughs> the place will be full of big noises, including <laughs> Göring and Himmler. I can't bait. <laughs> At midnight, you will be expected to dance the traditional Gestapo dance. How does it go, Herr Flick? I will demonstrate. <laughs> Put your left boot in, you take your left boot out. You do a lot of shouting and you shake your fists about. You light a little smoky and you burn down the town. That's what it's all about. Ah, Himmler, Himmler, Himmler. Switch it off. Switch it off. Yes, Kuba. Yes. Carry on, Kuba. Gruber has a good lead and has every hope of tracking down the painting. This is good news. <laughs> what do you want, von Smallhausen? I have to report a serious case of sabotage to the lawnmower of General von Klinkerhofen. The engine has disappeared. This is very mysterious. Who would require the engine of a lawnmower? Possibly, Herr Flick, someone who possesses a lawnmower without an engine. <laughs> you will not be a smart ass with me. Von Smart! Herr Flick, what are we going to do about General von Klickerhofen's lawn? It will be untidy. Get some peasants to eat the grass. <laughs> of course, Herr Flick. At once. <laughs> Seven girl, I used to polish it. What are we doing here? We are supposed to be in the bedroom. It is a shortcut. Whoever heard of a shortcut in a secret passage? <laughs> Somebody's coming. What? Look out. is the entrance to another secret passage which leads to the general's dressing room. Follow me. Find my 
punish you. <laughs> Where are they? In the cellars. I know that. They're about in the cellars. Will Kuba's plan of the chateau? Yes, um, it all depends on whether that is the north or whether that is the north. Have you got a compass? Uh, I, I have one on my Swiss army knife. Hang on. There. Mm. That is the north. In that case, we are going the wrong way. <laughs> Who are you? What are you doing? <laughs> Hans, you fool. What are you doing? You're knocking out our own people. It was a good shot, wasn't it? <laughs> what are you looking for? It was concealed around here in the herb. Well, hurry up and find it. Yvette will be doing her piece in three minutes. Any apologies? Ricky, hide. No, no, but go somewhere else. This was haunted. A sort of armor with a limp has just walked past. Hey, look out. Somebody else is coming. potatoes in the kitchen, but I can also peel other things. <laughs> How dare you assume that the German general would compromise himself with a serving girl? Who is there? It is I, Helga! <laughs> what do you want? I have for you a present from Herr Flick. A moment. I will hide in the wardrobe. No, 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 it's full, under the bed. <laughs> Do not ask. <laughs> the present. Am I to understand that Herr Flick has sent to me as a present at one o'clock in the morning a gramophone? Not only this, General. He has sent me. <laughs> Oh, come in, 
I most steamed up. Give me sausage. Oh, the sausage. <laughs> <laughs> you got to go. So, come on, then. God, my God, if he, if he finds me at Maria, I am a dead duck. <laughs> With Maria. <laughs> you stupid woman. What do you think I am doing in the wardrobe with Maria? She has fainted with cold fear. I am reviving her with the heat from my body. Yes, me wait till I get you home. Come in. I, Leclerc. I am disguised as a clown. The disguise was not necessary. And I have a message from Michel. She will arrive to collect the motor from the mower that is in the bus chair, huh? which is to go into the aeroplane that is in the museum, ready for the takeoff. She is off her rocker. <laughs> also, you are to collect. 200 feet of elastic to make a catapult to assist it into the air. <laughs> 200 feet of it? Where am I supposed to find 200 feet of elastic? Every man in the village will give up his braces. I have already given up mine. Viva la France! <laughs> oh. Look out. There are Germans coming. Get them. Quick. Get them on. Get them on. <laughs> And now, ladies and gentlemen, with your permission, never before seen in Nouveau, seven clubs in the air at one time. Never before seen. Music, maestro, please. <laughs> seven. Hey. <laughs> I did not say I could catch them. <laughs> there is any. Do you wish to speak to him? Oh, he's just clearing a table. He will be here in a minute. Ah, a captain, Colonel. Uh, I am sorry if I have kept you waiting. Uh, I was just dealing with a strolling idiot. <laughs> really? Yeah. There are going on things we do not understand. Uh, really, Colonel? Uh, a drink on the house, perhaps? <laughs> Thank you. For instance, there is the motor of the General's lawnmower. Search me. We did. We didn't find it. <laughs> Second, this vehicle rally. What is behind it? Oh, uh, nothing, Colonel. It is just us simple peasants enjoying ourselves with, with old steam engines and tractors and things. We are, after all, all little boys at heart, are we not? Oh, this is true, yes. I still sleep with Herman, my teddy bear. <laughs> I warn you, René, her flick will be there, and we shall also be there. Mingling. <laughs> Truthfully, Colonel, there is nothing unusual going on in the village. My braces. <laughs> <laughs> Why did this man give you his braces? <laughs> It's a secret society, Colonel. <laughs> yes, it is. It is the Grand Order of the um, of the uh, of the Night Owls. Of the Night Owls. That, that is right. Yes, the Grand Order of the Night Owls. I am the Grand Master. He is the Big Oot. <laughs> that man has just been initiated. Yes. Yeah? 
For three weeks, he must go around with no braces. <laughs> what have braces to do with night owls? <laughs> night owls do not wear braces. <laughs> that is why he has taken them off. It's all quite logical when you think about it. <laughs> <clears throat> Do they have girls? <laughs> Drive Carstairs. Oh, all right, I'll have a go. <laughs> <coughs> Is there a handbook or anything? <laughs> it's quite simple. The elastic braces are tied onto that car and hooked round the undercarriage. We start you up, the car is driven off. When the braces are at full stretch, we pull away the chocks and off you go. <laughs> Piece of cake. Where's England? When you're in the air, turn right and keep straight on. <laughs> 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 You start it, I will drive it. Do not talk to me with a pipe in your mouth. <laughs> Maria, when I give the signal, you and Yvette will pull away the chucks. Roger, Lisette, stand by on the propeller. Standing by. Switch on. Contact. Into it. They have started theirs already. I am killing myself here. <laughs> Sissy. You have to fear for the compassion. Oh, the joke. How do you know so much about it anyway? I used to drive one of these when I was a young girl. You got it from the 1904 motor show, I suppose. <laughs> 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 Quick, back to the cafe. <laughs> well, now, the news is serious. General von Klinkhofen is looking for you. He stormed into your office demanding to know where you were. What did you tell him? I said that as it was 5.30, you'd knocked off for an hour or two to have a quick run at the boozer <laughs> before resuming your search. Why didn't you tell him I was searching somewhere? He's such a dominating man. His powerful stare makes me filt and go weak. I cannot say no to a man like that. Oh, I wish I had that kind of stare. <laughs> you must drink up and get going, otherwise we for the hijack. Well, I'm with you. I'm only obeying your orders. General von Klinkhofen. Stand up, you peasants! Stand up! Up against the wall! Hands on heads! <laughs> Stand still! <laughs> well, it's up! <laughs> what are you doing with your hands on your head? I'm sorry, General. Your powerful stare makes me wilt and go weak. 
I cannot say no to a man like you. <laughs> Who is this idiot? He's my second in command. What do you mean by drinking here when you should be searching? We were looking for something suspicious. Do you expect to find something suspicious in the bottom of a glass? You're incompetent. Yes, General. I agree. We <laughs> shall probably have you court martialed. Yes, General. Um, General, I, I think at this point I should say that I was only acting under the colonel's orders, stupid though they were. <laughs> Silence! General, I can vouch for the fact that they have just searched this place most thoroughly, and while doing so, they beat several peasants and kicked the proprietor in a quite brutal fashion. <laughs> Good. This will go in their favor. Now, let us see what we have caught in our little net. It is I, Leclerc. <laughs> the pianist, General. Oh, the pianist. Oh. Can you play in the mood? <laughs> <laughs> we have found these two lurking in the kitchen. I see. What are these? Well, um... Uh, they are the staff here, General. Uh, yes, uh, uh, this is Fifi and Gigi. <laughs> I've not seen these two before. No. And it is not easy to miss the one on the left with the big Charlies. <laughs> they are new girls from out of town, Herr General. We are so busy, we had to take on extra staff. Are these the girls of uh, easy virtue I've heard about? <laughs> well, fairly easy. <laughs> mm. So it's much uh, work to do in my chateau. They are requisitioned. I think we'll start first thing in the morning. Oh, but, General, I, I will be short-handed. They may return here each evening to entertain my troops. You are most kind, General. <laughs> that is all. Come to over. Ooh. The painting. Oh, a, a, a worthless piece of rubbish, General. <laughs> hey, is that not so, Colonel? Quite I mean, worthless. Yes, it's terrible, isn't it? Is that so? Are you thinking what I am thinking, Robert? Then go. Mm. <laughs> Most assuredly in his style. You have some knowledge of these matters. Have it authenticated. We are taking the picture. Oh, but General, that is stealing. Yes, that is stealing. Oh, that stare again. <laughs> <laughs> yourself with women on the streets while I am out here working off my butt. <laughs> Perhaps I prefer the women of the streets to an old clacker of castanets. <laughs> Captain, are you prepared to see me insulted in my own cafe in this manner? Well, I hadn't thought about it, actually. <laughs> Dance on, strumpet. I am taking these two upstairs. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> Madame Edith Sully, how can you allow this insult to go unavenged? Allow me to strike him. Stand aside! <gasps> Die like a dog! Oh, oh my God! Oh. I have missed him and shot the women of the streets. <laughs> that was my gun! <laughs> Colonel, that was my gun! She shot them with my gun! <laughs> I was pissing by the door. <laughs> when I heard two shots, you are 
are holding in your hand a smoking goon. <laughs> you are clearly the guilty potty. I did not do it. Tell them I did not do it. I was not looking. <laughs> Officer, you have no authority over the glorious German army. This was just an ordinary crime of passion that happens in France on any Saturday night. <laughs> but if it should come to the ears of General von Klinkerhoff... General von Klinkerhoff? <laughs> if it should come to the ears of General von Klinkerhoff... <laughs> That, 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 that an officer allowed his gun to be taken from him, then both he and his superior would be in very hot water. Ah, you see, you are in it too. <laughs> for the usual bribe of 50,000 francs, I trust you will overlook this incident. Did I make those? Shut up. <laughs> Is there an undertaker in the house? <coughs> Monsieur Alphonse, undertaker. Quickly <laughs> and with style. Oh, what luck. I will turn to this a blonde eye. Remove the biddies. Colonel, Colonel, Captain, please, be quickly by the back door with your troops. I will see that General von Klinkerhofen does not get to hear of this. Thank you. Eddie. Take the lieutenant with you. Quick, Hans. You there! I didn't do it! I did not do it! Shut up! <laughs> They have swallowed it. They have swallowed it. I will tell you one thing, Edith. These Germans, they are so stupid. There is no way they are going to win this war. Here comes that English idiot who thinks he can speak our language. Good morning. Good morning. Do you want the good news or the bad news? <laughs> oh, do let us have the good news. <laughs> I have hashed up the shutting of the two tits. <laughs> what does Crabtree say of it? He has hashed up the shooting of the two tarts. <laughs> good. And what is the bad news? The Gestapo are hoovering round the graveyard. <laughs> Disguised as a nan, a bishop, and a Roman Catholic farter. I knew I should not have asked. Where are the airmen? They have taken spades. They have cracked along the tunnel. <laughs> and are dogging. Well, that does not sound like a lot of fun. Supposed to be helping them. What are we to do? With my disguise as policeman, <laughs> I am able to escort you there. Look, can you not find a phrase book and improve your French? <laughs> it is terrible. Nobody has complained so far. <laughs> if they do, I will tell them that I am from the left bunk. <laughs> Bet. Maria. Get on the tables and collect all the flowers so we can take them with us. And Could what you... excuse do we give to the colonel and the captain? Hmm? You leave this to me. <sighs> dear colonel, dear captain, forgive us, but we are departing to pay our respects to the two women of the street who I unfortunately shot with your gun. Uh, come on. <laughs> Hans, I think they're up to something. Oh, Uncle Kurt, you're speaking to me. <laughs> oh, what a relief. <laughs> oh, let that be a lesson to you. Yes. <laughs> I think we should follow René. But General von Klinkerhofen told us to watch the cafe. You're right. We should obey orders. We will watch the cafe. Ladies and gentlemen, but tonight it is cabaret time at the Café René. Oh, no. And in the absence of <laughs> Madame Edith, please to welcome, from the Folie Bergère, Madame Fanny Lafay. <laughs> Let me 
let's make a start again for giving and forgetting. I was right in the first place. We will follow Rene. But what about the orders? Officers must use their initiative. Besides, there's no cheese for our ears. <laughs> Let's turn back the years Let's fight sun after tears Like sunshine after rain oh, I'm yearning for you By night and by day Play the you say If I've caught you at an inconvenient moment. Can I help you, monsieur? I am looking for Monsieur René, who I observed entering these premises. He's not here. We will search. Hans, search. Search, search. <coughs> Is there a dead body in here? Hopefully. <laughs> we put a screwdriver in with them in case we make a mistake. <laughs> How far do you want me to go? What do you mean? It is spooky. <laughs> Open the coffin. It is full of earth. Why is this coffin full of earth? I am growing mushrooms. <laughs> I do not see any mushrooms. That is probably because they have not yet to come up. <laughs> There's earth on the floor. Hans? Help me. Oh, no, monsieur, you cannot. You cannot defile the tomb of the departed. Why is the earth in your pool? I am trying to cultivate the stone of the avocado pear. Do you have to sit on it to cultivate it? Monsieur, it requires a warm temperature. I grew one on a damp flannel. <laughs> It is a tunnel! A tunnel! How did that get in there? <laughs> we must find out where it leads. Hans, you go first. Eh? <coughs> now, what's going on? We are being hunted by the Gestapo and the Jerry troops. In fact, the whole damn lot of them. They find us without uniforms or with shot. Well, what about this lot? We're the French resistance. They'll shoot us too. My God, Simpson. This is a bit of a facer. There's an inspection in five minutes. Of course. With the crowd general. Uh, we'd better set about hiding them. Will somebody please tell me what is going on? They are going to hide us. But why do we not go back down the tunnel? The colonel and the captain are coming down it. What am I going to do? How about trying to behave like the bravest man in all France? <laughs> Hans, I'm stuck. Oh. Give me a pull. Yes. One, two, two three. three. Oh. oh, no, look what you have done. We are trapped, and I suffer from claustrophobia. <laughs> I have had it ever since my mother tried to smuggle me out of Berlin in a suitcase. Why would she do that? So my father wouldn't find out about me. <laughs> I say, there are some more coming. Yeah, they're dressed as crowds. That's because they are crowds. Uh, hold my gun while I get out. <laughs> <laughs> has come out in England. <laughs> Everyone here is a nervous. Attention, attention. Stand by for inspection. By General von Klinkerhofen. There is a gun in your back. If you give us away, you will be the first to die. Do exactly as I say. 
and listen very carefully. You will say these only words. <laughs>